Do you want to have fun in the preseason? You want to try new things and experiment? Well, you've come to the right video. How are we game weepers? I'm Coach Eggs, a multi-season challenger player and now coach. And in this video, you will find out what the top 10 craziest builds are this preseason. The new and updated items have created the opportunity for a bunch of champions to build all kinds of whack. And we'll be counting down who and what those are in just a second. If you're someone who wants to enjoy League as much as possible until season 11 comes around, then you are going to love what's coming up. I want to know what off-meta builds you have been trying. Let me know in the comments your ideas and whether you've tried any of the builds in our list. As always, remember to smash the like button and subscribe and turn on all notifications. Daily videos updating you on everything Season 11, so help yourselves out. I just want to quickly let you know that we have a 50% sale on at our website GameWeep.com. Courses, guides, videos for every champ made by the best players and coaches going around. If there was ever a time to invest, it's right now. So head on over before the sale ends, link will be in the description. Alright, let's start the craziness. So you thought AP Kale was the OP. You'd be right, but the AD version of the Righteous can be just as nuts. And this is our number 10, AD Kale. If you love Kale and want to try something new, or you want to play Kale mid or top, but your team comp is stacked with AP, then this build will make you happy. So why AD? Well, compared to AP, you deal a similar amount of insane damage in just a few seconds. The critical strike chance from your items adds a ton of power to your level 11 E, and once you are full build, the lifesteal you obtain is nuts. Your ultimate may deal less damage even though it's enhanced by your bonus AD, and even if you survive on 1 HP, you can lifesteal back up in no time at all. So here's the build you are going to use. Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, Blade of the Ruined King, into Renan's Hurricane, Ravenous Hydra, and Bloodthirster. The attack speed, the crit, the on hit, the sustain is extremely oppressive and you will hard carry games no doubt about it. Just a quickie, the reason you miss Ginsu's Rage Blade is because it takes away your crit chance on your level 11 E. AP Kale is still the strongest champion in the game and is expected to be nerfed sooner rather than later. So this will bring AD Kale into the fray, so start getting used to her right now guys. Coming in at number 9, it's Crit Nico. Believe it or not, Nico is the best top lane bully in the game, and barely anyone actually abuses it. Think of all those popular tank and bruiser champions you see. You can humiliate them with just two items, Kraken Slayer and Bork. The on-hit damage and critical strike chance shred through enemy health bars, and the attack speed helps you proc your W passive every couple of seconds. The bonus movement speed is amazing. It helps you cut and deal more damage and evade more damage. Not to mention you have your shape splitter active to get you out of those situations that do get a bit too sticky. Run press the attack as your keystone and build Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Grease, and Blade of the Rune King. That's your core. After that, you have a variety of options. You can opt for Renan's Hurricane, Bloodthirst, Rapid Fire Cannon, PD, Mortal Reminder, it depends on what you need most to destroy the enemy team composition. If you want to dominate top lane and have fun while doing it, Crit Nico is the build for you. This feline may have been on our worst champions list, but there is one left field build that is incredibly fun to try out and is actually effective. Our number 8 spot is AP Rengar. Alright, so Tiamat got nerfed and Rengar gets stomped by popular top lane bruisers like Set and Jax, and doesn't like jumping onto beefy tanks like Maokai and Malphite. So what can you do? Trust in the AP guys. Why? You are still strong in the early game, your sustain is unreal, you can bait cooldowns like no other and just empower W to escape heavy crowd control, and you can still throw out a heap of damage against squishy enemy champions. Take Phase Rush as your keystone and style the longsword. Your first buy is a fiendish codex because ability haste is crucial, and then you are starting to build towards a Night Harvester. Take Lucidity Boots and upgrade your Longsword to a Dirk before you invest in your Mythic. This gives you a little more bite early on. Next up, Cosmic Drive. The 30 ability haste and movement speed from its passive synergizes with Phase Rush and the movement speed from your passive Unseen Predator. Your last core item is Lich Bane, and this gives you the on hit you need to blow up the enemy AD carry. Death Cap, Void Staff, Morella Nomicon, Zonyas, Banshees, sell your Dirk and purchase any of these three items to complete your build depending on what you need in your game. This build is one of the most fun to use and frustrating to play against, so tilt your enemies and play AP Rengar. Destiny has arrived, and we ain't talking Thanos. Holding the number 7 spot on our list is AD Twisted Fate. ADTF has always been a thing, don't get me wrong, it's just that this new build is actually hella good and you can 1v9 games with ease. 
The main benefit of AD Twisted Fate against AP Twisted Fate is that your hard matchups become way more playable. Think of Fizz and Arkali. You can outtrade these AP assassins and put an incredible amount of pressure on them. Your biggest strength as AD Twisted Fate is your damage per second. You may not have the wave clear and burst as your AP self, but in a straight up 1v1 you can dominate pretty much any champion. Take Fades Rush as your keystone and still max Q followed by W and E. For your build, start Corrupting Potion for your trading, and your first major item is Trinity Force. Mercury Treads or Plated Steel Caps as your boots depending on the enemy team, and follow this with a Wit's End, Blade of the Ruined King, and Rapid Fire Cannon. As your last item, take Dead Man's Plate or Force of Nature, depending on what's needed most. Lock in the Cardmaster and weave your way to the enemy nexus. It's fun, but guys, so rewarding. Sneaking in at number 6, it's AP Twitch. Now I'm sure we've all seen this and maybe we've tested it out, and guess what? The rumours are actually true. AP Twitch is legit. The Plague Rat's passive Deadly Venom and E Contaminate combine for what is certainly one of the scariest combos in the preseason thus far. Twitch's passive and Venom cast slow, scale with AP, and contaminates AP scaling, now deals 33.3% AP magic damage per stack. This means at 6 stacks, the maximum, you deal 200% AP magic damage. Later in a game when you have nearly 6 items, you can start contaminating champions and objectives like Baron and Dragon for around 1500 damage. This is extremely toxic because so many builds are damage centric and the champions you focus will have no resistances. If there are those smart enough to select a tankier champion to stop you from obliterating their team, you will still shred through their meatiness with ease. Even if you do get jumped on by an assassin or high damage dealer, you are in such a state now that you can land a few autos and apply a few deadly venom stacks and pop goes the weasel. Rush and Nash's tooth with Halo Blades is your keystone and spread the green stuff. So much fun. Moving on to our top 5, it's getting exciting isn't it? Portling in at the 5th spot on our countdown is Nash's Bard. If you want to test out Bard mid and have fun, or if you want a hard carry from support because you don't trust Yellow Supercar as your ADC, then this build gives you everything you want. First off, you have crazy burst damage. This on its own is great for this preseason. Your Meeps scale with AP and act as Bard's own innate on attack buff. Coupled with your ability power on hit and attack speed from your items, you turn into an on hit nuclear carry. The damage is nuts. You still have the same setup as you always have with your ultimate and Q stun, but this time you don't need another teammate doing the killing on that immobilized enemy. You can be the one to send them back to base. Choose Hail of Blades or Electrocute as your keystone depending on what you prefer and Rush Nash's Tooth. Build Night Harvester as your mythic and follow this up with a Lich Bane and Rapid Fire Cannon. In terms of boots, Build Sorcerer's Shoes. You will not regret testing this out, so go out and have some fun with Nash's Bard Game Leapers. Coming in at the number 4 spot, we have Leandri's Misfortune. As a support, you may not offer much CC wise, but you bring as much damage as anyone. Your Q, E and R scale with AP, and your damage from your abilities throughout the game is amplified once you have the burn from Leandri's Anguish. Make sure you max your E and tap this off cooldown in lane to poke the enemy AD carry. As MF you have the lowest base AD in the game, so most of the time it's not even worth going in for auto attacks unless it's really free. This is why Leandri's is even better. Its mythic passive gives you ability haste for each legendary item, so your E cooldown can be as low as 5 seconds in the latest stages of a game. Take Comet as your keystone. For your boots, take Lucidities or Sorks, and after your Leandri's buy Cosmic Drive and Horizon Focus. The extra haste and movement speed from the drive is invaluable, and the damage from HF procs on your E and ultimate. No longer will you have to rely on your teammates to dish out the damage. You will have a lot of fun with APMF, Trust me guys, so have a crack. We move on to the top 3. The champion with the bronze medal is AP Varus. If you want to surprise your opponents with a champion this season, Varus with AP items it is. Your W's on hit damage scales with AP, as does your blight detonation damage which is increased by 50% on a fully charged piercing arrow. This leads to insane damage. Your R also scales with ability power, so think about this situation. You land your ultimate onto an enemy champion, they now have full blight stacks, and all you have to do now is press W and charge up your Q to blow them to bits. If they did survive, your Q will be up in no time at all because of the introduced cooldown in 1024, so you can fire multiple arrows in quick succession. It packs a serious punch and enemies certainly don't expect it. Take Hail of Blaze as your keystone. This makes it easier to apply blight stacks via your auto attacks. Rush Nash's Tooth into Sorcerer's Shoes, and for your Mythic, build Luden's Tempest. These three items are your core. 
To complete your build, be a Chad and go with Death Cap, Horizon Focus and Void Staff. Your opponents will not know what hit them. The runner up in our countdown at the number 2 spot, we have Mandate Ash. MS support is a good as option, AP Ash is the real deal. Your Imperial Mandate passive procs on your passive, W and ultimate, so it's extremely easy for your teammates to exploit this effect throughout a game. The only ability in your kit that scales with AP is your Crystal Arrow, but it does a ridiculously high amount of damage. In teamfights around dragons and barons wherever they are, you will single-handedly win fights just off your ultimate and mandate alone. Take Comet as your keystone, rush Imperial Mandate and buy Lucidity Boots, followed by Cosmic Drive and then Horizon Focus. Follow this up with a Death Cap and a Void Staff. Now this build is not for the faint-hearted. You will be the squishiest on the battlefield, but also the most dangerous. Just because of this, Mandate Ash makes supporting a ton of fun, so test it out. Number 1. Are we ready? The champion lucky enough to boast the winner's spot is AD Katarina. If you want to hard carry while having the biggest smile on your face, there's no champion in build that does it better. The Sinister Blade now applies on hit effects and not only that, her ultimate now deals both magic and physical damage with each dagger thrown and this also scales off her attack speed. So how crazy is this? Blade of the Ruin King is the first item you now rush on Katarina and you can proc both passives from your ultimate and lifesteal at the same time. It gets crazier. Ginsu's Rage Blade and Kraken Slayer that also grant on hit bonuses proc on every third dagger Cat throws. She can throw 5 of these during a max ultimate and your damage is absurd. Take Conqueror as your keystone and your build is as follows. Blade of the Ruined King, Berserker's Grease, Kraken Slayer, Ginsu's Rage Blade and your last 2 items choose between Ravenous Hydra, Essence Reaver or Phantom Dancer. You are the passive queen with these items so if you want to spin your way to happiness and victory this preseason and in Season 11, Crit Cat is your go-to option. If you want to make the most out of the preseason and have the most amount of fun as possible guys, then test out the champions and builds on this list. I guarantee it will enrich your preseason. Before I leave, friendly reminder again, 50% off GameLeap.com. This sale is not going to last forever, so get your heads on over there. Link will be in the description. This has been Coaches, and until next time, 